Hi guys, welcome back to Liv's Vivas week 14. Today we have a Viva about war and also two guests. I impulsively bought two baby guinea pigs. They're so cute. So I'm giving them to Anna because she needs a pet. But yeah, they're really cute. So here's our Viva guests. Oh, Sean and Gus. They're cuties. But I'll put them back so we can focus on World War One Viva. Okay. Um. Okay. So today's Viva is how did the First World War transform the world? So, although most people oversimplify the impact of the First World War, it was a conflict that brought an end to the stability of the 19th century world order. It brought an end to European dominance and the rise of the United States. It brought an end to ancient traditions and the rise of new technology. And then it brought an end to the dominance of monarchy in European politics and the rise of democracies. So if we dive into our first point and we talk about how World War One really impacted and brought an end to the Europe, Europe's dominance and the birth of the United States. So in the late 15th century, Europe had all of the concentrated power and all of the power rested on the colonial enterprise that they had. So when World War One came, the, it ended the power of imbalance by killing and injuring many of the Europeans. Um, we can see this in 1914, the population was 480 million people. And then World War One happened and it caused 40 million casualties. And so that really affected Europe and just like the more um, people, you know, who pass away, kind of the more their power drops. And this is also, you know, we have to consider too the birth rate. The birth rate drops too significantly just because men and women were separated at this time. Um, a quote by Augustine Comte, Comte, Comte um, says, quote, demographics is destiny, end quote. And so this quote basically means that whoever's gonna have the most kids they're going to have the most control of the future and power. So as the kids started not to come from Europe and men were dying and people were dying and severely injured, that just kind of started Europe to go into that downhill. Um, also, it's kind of interesting. They have demographic demographic echoes. And it's really interesting. If you look at a graph, it like echoes. So it goes down, up, down, up. And it's basically because there would have been a whole generation that hadn't been born because men and women were separated during World War One. So then that then affects that goes down and then it, you know, goes back up because then they have kids after, you know, and then it goes down because it missed like the generations. There's like a whole missing like generations of people because of World War One, which is super interesting. Um, so we have to consider that too: the unborn, the killed. And um, the injured really shows us why the colonial holdings of Europe and that supported Europe's dominance begin to diminish after World War I. Um, so the question now is, did Europe's success lead to its self-destruction? And this is an interesting question if we think about it. Um, and Calhoun's, he was a scientist and he did an experiment with a rats and utopias. And he basically, he, you know, got all these rats and he put them in the perfect world. He created a perfect world for them where they had abundance of food, you know, good places to live, good places to have more rats. They, you know, they just, you know, created this perfect world for rats. And what they found out was as they take the rat's instincts and purposes away, it leads to unhappiness. And what I mean by this is when they take the, cause you know, rats are constantly, 
you know, running around trying to find food, running around trying to escape predators, you know, trying to be the alpha male, finding a female. Like, there's certain things that rats have to do to survive. And when you take that away and just give them the perfect world, they become unhappy. And this can be seen with Europe as well. When you take away the element of competition and work, people and just give them kind of an easy life. And we also could see this in today's world, surprisingly. Or not surprisingly, honestly. Um, but it takes away people's purpose and they become unhappy and don't know what to do with themselves. Um, so five conclusions that Calhoun came up with is that prolonged prosperity leads to the disappearance of masculinity and unhealthy fixation on appearance. So they said they saw this through the quote, the beautiful ones. Um, and so they were just the rats that were always like obsessed with cleaning themselves and like looking the best because they had nothing else to like focus on. Um, another one that happened is social isolation um, from dense populations causes more aggression with the rats. And um, you can see this because, oh, forgot to tell you at the end of the experiment, he all of a sudden the rats like all turned on each other and they like ate all of each other and they killed the whole rat population. And so the perfect world just was destroyed and they self-destructed. Um, so this was probably due to, you know, this dense populations, like they were being more and more aggressive with each other. Um, number three is that the extinction of society because prolonged prosperity. So again, just, it kind of starts to lead to the downfall and then densely populated areas forces women to take the roles of men because men lose interest in performing their traditional rules so you know like men don't have to compete anymore to get a woman or work anymore because life is easy so it's like why aren't women and men equal um and number five is that the need to provide a new generation with work or they will self-destruct so those are kind of the things that he found out and we can see a lot of similarities between his perfect utopia of the rat worlds and Europe. Um, yeah. So moving on to point two on how World War I ended. Why how? World War War affected the stable ended the stability of 19th century world as it ended ancient tech traditions and it was the rise for new technology um so this can be seen in their trench warfare trench warfare was new to world war one and it started in 1914 um and so they would basically dig trenches and they would fight through the trenches it was awful warfare as we've kind of researched and studied about and um so that was new to world war one and then they also had military hardware such as poison gas um which started in 1915 so a year into world war one and that you know poison gas obviously led to gas masks being created as well um and again gas masks or gas poison gas and trench warfare were two of just the really horrific things that happened during world war one um, another thing that kind of happened and was new in technologically development was airplanes and air traffic control. Um, so they created, oh, sorry, pilot, pilotless drones to go and disassemble bombs, unarmed bombs, and the U.S. Navy made them in 1916 and they made one in 1917. And then they also had, Germany had the Zeppelin bombers, which I feel like this is like really iconic for some reason. I totally remember this. I feel like it's from Doctor Who or something, but like the big like blimp things and they would use those to drop bombs. Um, So that was like super new because if you think about it, like they didn't have, like this is like really not, they didn't have a lot of technology, like techno technology because they didn't like need to have it and during the war it promoted competition to defeat you know the other countries and so 
it just led to technological development. Um, another one that we don't really think of is plastic surgery. So, um, Sharpnell is when the fragments of a bomb are, like, thrown from an explosion. So when something blows up and everything flies, um, obviously that hit some of the men and led to a lot of facial injuries and disfigurements. Um, and Harold Gillies was a surgeon during that time and he, he felt really bad for the soldiers and so he decided that he was going to try to use different parts of their skin, just different techniques to kind of reshape their face and make them look a little more normal. Um, sorry, that's gonna be annoying. Um, also another one that came up during World War One, which was new, was blood banks. So the British Army started using blood transfusions to treat, a, to treat wounded soldiers. And then a U.S. Army doctor, Captain Oswald Robertson, um, established the first blood bank on the Western Front in 1917. Um, so they used sodium citrate to preserve the blood and then they could keep it on ice for 28 days. So this was, this was perfect, you know, a soldier comes in, grab a bloody ice bag and get them back on track. Um, also what's kind of interesting is that they believed that there was good and bad blood. Sorry, don't know why I'm yawning so much. Um, so they believed that if you had like a criminal or, you know, someone who was kind of like a bad person, that if you transferred someone who was really sweet and kind, that if you transferred some of their blood into like that person's blood, they would be nicer. <laughs> so it's like kind of a weird concept and I kind of like it and I kind of appreciate it, but that's what they thought. Um... So our third point on how World War I ended the stability of the 19th century world is it ended the dominance of monarchy and brought the rise of democracy along with all the negative ideas that come with democracy. Um, so as Amer in America, we look at democracy as this amazing thing with very positive outcomes. However, there are also negative things about democracy, and the rise of the democracy in Europe brought enormous tragedy. One being the election of Adolf Hitler, um, and the whole start of World War II, which is kind of crazy, and if you think that was democracy. Um, and also the rise of propaganda as a political tool, which also I think we can see a lot in today's world. Um, so Wilson, if we read some of Wilson, Woodrow Wilson's um, vision of democracy is he says quote we shall for we shall fight for the things which we have always carried nearest to our hearts for democracy for the right to those who submit to authority to have a voice in their government for the rights and liberties of small nations for a universal dominion of right for of right by which a concert of free peoples as shall bring peace and safety to all nations and make the world itself at last free, end quote. Um, so that was kind of Wilson, President Wilson's um, vision and view of democracy. He obviously saw it as a very positive thing. Um, however, we can see that power and control was largely expressed and, and used to get more control through the use of propaganda. Um, an example of this is, okay, I'm going to try to say this. It's going to be fun. <laughs> the Kata, Kata Var, Var Wing Tung, Tungus na, Nostal, old, I think. I don't know how to say that. Um, but it was basically this worldwide statement that went out and they said Germany the German soldiers were boiling down the human corpses to extract gelatin and other useful substances from the human bodies to make 
lubricant and shoe polish and just other like gross stuff um and that was like super creepy and everyone was like oh my gosh germany you know um but then it was kind of found out that this was a false cynical piece of propaganda written by a british man in the propaganda department to make germany look bad um so this british this british writer obviously knew a lot about german germany and its culture because he used the word cat cadaver which means carcass and not corpse so it's like kind of gross but basically they really falsified a whole story that was not just like a little fact it was a whole story and they falsified it and used it to gain people's sympathy and gain people's emotions and gain people's power and control and support and so it's really thinking about this this is extremely terrifying and we really need to look out for this in today's world um especially now because this viva really i think hit home to a lot of things that are happening in america today which is sad but true so anyways let's wrap this up although most people oversimplify the impact of the first world war it was a conflict that brought the end of the stability in the 19th century world order by bringing an end to Europeans' dominance and the rise of the United States, ancient traditions and the rise of new technology and the dominion of monarchy into in Europe's politics to the rise of democracy. All right, and thank you guys so much week 14 hope you enjoyed learned a lot and see you next time